Sure. You would wrestle Sergeant Slaughter quite a few times. We're going to bring different names that you'd wrestle, uh, you know, several times over the years. And it's always nice to bring up Sergeant Slaughter because uh, I don't think he really gets his due, uh, uh, maybe with the modern audience, for how great he was as a bad guy and a good guy just in the WWF in the early 80s. Give me, uh, give me some stories on the Sarge. Wow. Bob was uh, really, really a good guy. Another guy who's very generous and so forth in the ring when he when he had to be you know and uh uh i w- i would say you know every time i worked with sarge it, it, it was it was a give and take type of a match and so forth and and uh even a little bit later on we were working in the nwf and uh, occasionally they would put me as the uh mad russian which was and i said you know bob i think bob raskin was the promoter an old-time basketball promoter and uh uh, I said, Bob, I said, why don't you just put me in the round? He goes, well, we need a main event, you know what I mean, and the Russian gimmick. And, and I'll tell you, Bob, Bob would take these bumps that, that that I wouldn't think he'd be, you know, injuring his back, taking a chance injuring his back in, in, in a match like this, especially with maybe two, three, four hundred people. But you have to understand that, you know, the promoter would go out to all these businesses and they would buy ads in a book, which was five times more than what the, uh, the the people were charging to come in come in and see. So we were getting paid well, you know. Um, Bob even took the opportunity in in Hamburg one time to uh, he took me into the shower and he says, "Hey, he goes, do you think that you could do a di type of a gimmick with me?" And he goes, "You know, ad- address me like I'm a a private or something, you know." And, and, you know, maybe I was just in an area where, you know, just feet away were the biggest names in the business and, and you know, I'm going to be yelling and screaming. And, and I just kind of thought, I said, you know, maybe that's not the way to go. And I said, you know, Bob, I said, I don't know if I'd maybe be interested in doing that, you know. And, you know, later on, I think he had gotten Kernodal or, or uh, Terry Daniels, something like that. But Jim, Jim Nelson was, did that as well, I think. He was like yeah, private. Yeah, so he was looking for those private type of things. And, you know, that didn't hurt me anything. You know, that was early on and so forth. So, yeah, Sarge, Sarge was a good guy. Yeah, yeah. great guy. Were you, uh, were you in the building uh, that day when he turns good guy and defends America against the evil Iranian Sheiky? Oh, I can't, I can't recall. You know, I mean, there's, there's some things that um, I can remember as though, as though it was yesterday. And, and some things I just don't remember that. Uh, uh. No, that's fair enough then. Um, so do you remember any other story uh, storylines or and I hate using the wrestling vernacular, but I can't think of it. It's just quicker to say it, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, something like that where you're in the building and thought, wow, that worked with the fans hugely. Um, yeah, I think it was. Uh, I think one comes to mind. Um, I was in Madison Square Garden when this match took place and it was... Uh, uh, your favorite wrestler, Don Morocco, uh-huh. against Superfly Jimmy Snuka, and uh, a, a tremendous match they had, and and you know it finished with uh, uh, it was a steel cage match, and it finished with Snuka climbing the steel cage and doing that big body splash against Don, and 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 and, and, and Don was just you know he was less laying there still in that ring, he kept his hands by his side so he wouldn't get injured, and he didn't even come up or anything, he just laid there, he trusted Snuka. And, you know, they were showing that match on the little monitor in Hamburg uh, where Vince Sr. and Vince were back there. And uh, I guess they were going to show that as part of the show. And we went all back in there. And, and you know, when that when that splash happened, man, you could hear the people pop. I mean, I mean, that was probably one of the biggest reactions I've heard in, in wrestling. And, and it even goes beyond uh, Larry Zbysko turning on Bruno. You know, so uh, but of course, you know, you're talking about uh, 15,000 people versus maybe 3000 people in a little arena. So the sound is going to be a lot more, you know, but that was that was that was something right yeah. there. It's, it's funny you mentioned, actually, uh, because we talked I talked with Don this Monday uh, for mm. two episodes about the uh, whole snooker thing. And uh, he was injured on the splash. Apparently, uh, Snooker kneed him in the thigh when he landed. I just said that was the oh. worst Charlie horse I've ever had in my entire life. Oh yeah, I, well I see. I didn't know that. Yeah, and then that that I'm sure that could have happened. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I know. I've had my share of injuries, and uh, uh, especially having to work with extreme back back pain. Uh, 
but yeah, I, I can imagine. And I'm sure he went on. He was a trooper and went on and kept on working too. I bet. 